Hello! Have something new from Radio Master today. It's called the ERS GPS. And if you're thinking, well, I already know what a GPS is, I, you might have one on your quad like this, then this is not the product for you. The idea of this is it's an add on sensor for a receiver. So if you're flying like a line of sight, or maybe you're flying still line of sight, but something like a glider where you'd use the Vario in the previous phone, you can plug this in and it'll give you GPS coordinates or it will measure your ground speed. So it's kind of got two modes. I'd normally do an unboxing, but there's so little in it. I'll show you what you get. You get in the bag, the little GPS unit itself, which has little lights and a button to change modes, and this cable to plug it into things. Weirdly enough, to plug it in, you plug it into the out. I think that's supposed to say that, you know, data's coming out. And then you have to plug it in to uh, the right type of receiver. So this works on ER6, ER8, uh, ER8G and ER8GV receivers. It's quite specific about that. The reason you have to use something like this and not one of the smaller ones that I've got in this car here is because they have this little extension socket which they always marked for future sensors, like this one. Uh, basically you just plug it in like that and you are good to go. I had to steal this off my uh, Bixar. I wasn't expecting to, to need the, the big one. So what you've got then is this thing can work in two modes. In its first mode, it's kind of a, a standard GPS, so it measures your altitude, your GPS coordinates can go back on the sensor, uh, your speed, and your heading. If you change the mode and you want to measure your ground speed, um, it goes into 10 hertz mode and just brings back the speed information. So you can have your, your speed as it is, and you can have a sensor for your max speed. So you can do like max speed runs on this. And there's like dedicated GPS units that can measure your max speed, but this is going to be a lot cheaper. But of course you do have to make sure you've got one of these receivers there in the first place. So let's go to close up. We'll plug it in and I'll show you how to get the extra sensors in and what they look like. And then we'll take it outside so we can actually get a fix. And perhaps I'll swap out the receiver here and we'll see how fast this can go, which by memory is not all that fast, but it'd be interesting to see what the actual speed is. So if we just had this receiver working, and we went in and looked at our telemetry, we'd get quite a bunch of stuff just from um, Express LRS. And in fact, this this uh, this has already got an extra sensor because you can plug in uh, a voltage in that little one there and it'll give you some info. So all you need to do is go and discover new once you've plugged in the GPS, which we'll do now. So I've gone ahead and plugged this in and you'll see the red one indicates a mode and the green is flashing. It flashes when there's less than four satellites. As soon as it gets uh, a lock, it will turn solid green. There's also an in, uh, which you might have thought that's where you'd plug it into, but no, the in is for extra telemetry sensors. So you could daisy chain these up and as soon as more come out, just plug them in and you can have a whole chain of them. I'm not sh quite sure what the restriction on how much of a chain you can have, but that's what you get. Anyway, now we've got that. If we go ahead and say, add discover new, we have now found GPS, ground speed, heading, altitude, and sats. We stop that. Um, and you can see the little flashes as the telemetry comes in. So if I change mode, what I'm going to do is there's a little button there, this little black thing. It's quite small, but if you press and hold, we should see the color change on the way. Let's see if we can press it down correctly. There you go. So it's gone to blue. Blue means it's now working only to try and get your ground speed. It's super accurate. So when you've got this, what you won't get is updates on your altitude or heading or um, your position, but you will get the speed and you can add the max speed there as well. So what I've gone and done is set up a typical display here for my telemetry and I've added the GPS coordinates, altitude, number of satellites, heading, GPS speed and GPS speed plus. GPS speed plus is the max speed recorded so that's where you can do your speed run so the GPS speed will be the instantaneous one and the GPS speed plus will be the highest you've got to. Now to do this and to get some satellites because we won't get any here in the house I am, I think, going to swap this out. And I don't think I'll use this radio, although the display is nice and big. I'll try using my uh, proper ground radio, which has got a little steering wheel and stuff, also from Radio Master. So let's check that out next. Well, welcome to the park, where it's a 
lovely day sun-wise, but deceptively windy. We've got the little car hooked up. It's all a little bit crowded here, where we've got the receiver, the VTX, and the GPS all in a line. Ideally, I'd like to spread it out, but you know, it's a small car, so what are you gonna do? Anyway, first thing I do is turn it on, see if we get some sats locked in, see how it looks. Well, been sitting there a few minutes, and it's got some sats. It's got the position, heading, altitude. I'm not sure if altitude is above sea level or what with that one. I didn't really look at that, perhaps I should have. We've got it in uh, regular mode at the moment, which is gives the positions and stuff. So I'm just gonna drive that around, uh, see what we get. Not really wanting to FPV it, but I've got the little FPV watch on just for fun. But what I wanna do is just, film here and see what happens as I drive it. That's the dog's now right away. Well, stuff has changed. We got a max speed of 19. I couldn't, I can only watch one thing at a time. It's great fun trying to steal one-handed whilst doing this, but... It's kind of quite a slow update on the GPS position, plus we haven't moved very far. So that is it as the regular one. Let's just get a bit further away so we can see the position go. We are on 9.261.46, so let's, let's go further. What are you moving at? Oh, it's changing. Six five five eight. Just out there somewhere. So what I do now is I switch over to the speed mode. I can actually push the button. Okay. Speed mode activated. And I'm going to reset the stats here. You just hold enter and say so reset telemetry. And we get this. Now you notice we get no positions, we just want speed. So let's see what happens. Okay, so. I'm not entirely sure what happened here. Here's the footage I got on my phone, and what I was expecting to see is the car going really fast along the path. I guess this is the problem with trying to film, hold on to the dog, hold on to a control, and steer a car all at the same time. But this is what it looked like from the FPV camera, resulting in a big old crash, but a top speed record of 34.9 kilometers per hour. Now let's say you were exploring a long way away, not necessarily within your line of sight, and you flipped over and your battery came out. What would happen then? Well, let's see. Okay, all unplugged, nothing happening, no lights or anything. What happens is this. The radio is not getting telemetry, so it's flashing away, but it also gives the last position where I knew about. So you get your phone out, you go to that position, you get your whatever. Well, hi there. We're just in the garden with the car, and I want to come out here because I wanted to look at the problem with the altitude. It seems to come up with a presumably an above sea level thing, but of course, if you're flying, you'd probably want to know from your level. So, you know, we need to reset that to zero. How do you do that? And I think I've got the way. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't done it before, but this is what I would do. Come out of telemetry, go into the model, go to your telemetry screen, If we go up to out, you see it's on 69 meters there. So if we hit enter, hold it down, we'll edit. And what I'm going to do is go down and enable auto offset. What auto offset does, it gets the first value it gets and uses that as an offset. So if it gets through 69 meters, it should basically subtract 69 meters from it. We can also put positive on. 
so it's only a positive number. Now, in most cases, I think that's quite useful. Obviously, if you were launching from the top of a hill and flying downwards, you'd probably want to know how far you were underneath. But that's my uh, two things there. So what I'm going to do then is come back out, go into my telemetry, and I'm going to hold this to reset telemetry. Telemetry connected. And now you see we have an altitude of zero. So how do I test that when I've just got a car here? Well, I'm figuring I'll put it on top of that, see what happens. Okay, there's the car. It's actually about two meters up. And if we go back to our telemetry screen now, it says it's one meter up. Altitude's not brilliantly accurate, especially at um, low altitudes, but uh, you'll certainly understand if you're at like 100 meters versus 200 meters or something like that. So that's what I think is the fix for that one, to edit the sensor data so you use the auto offset. An interesting little device, but who is this really for? Well, it kind of comes down to, I think, three areas for me. Firstly, people that want to get a, a speed test on one of their models. Um, like you're going for the 200 mile an hour plus. I mean, if you're doing that, for God's sakes, use ELRS. I keep seeing these videos of people running really high speed, but they tend to be traditional modelers and they're like, trying to boost their Futaba systems or heavens forbid Spectrum, Express LRS, please do it. And then you can just add a sensor and then you will get your feedback data. So I think that's pretty good for those guys. The other people who I think this is gonna be good for is as I said, line of sight modelers, especially those guys that fly big gliders. They've still got a limit on how high they can go. And of course you could hook this up to some warnings. So if you go like above 120 meters or whatever it is for them, then it can start you know, bleating at you and saying, warning, 100 meters reached or stuff like that. And then you've got people that fly FPV, but they might not have a flight control on. I've got loads of little wings, uh, which are just fun flying things and they're very basic. Uh, the only problem comes if, uh, if they crash. And if you've got something like this that gives you the last coordinates, that gives you a, a very clear search area to go. So that's quite handy for those guys. And I'll be interested to see what else comes up in Radio Master's uh, release of different sensors they can add on there. So that was the Radio Master ERS GPS, kindly supplied by Radio Master, thanks to them. And if you're interested in checking the product out in more detail, they'll of course be links down below in the description. Hope that's been helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.